Hello, and welcome to my Pro Tools video tutorial on Beat Detective. So this is my first uh, Pro Tools tutorial, so I kind of want to get my feet wet with something that I thought would be pretty quick and simple. So it's not a beginning tutorial, it's more intermediate, but let's see how it goes. So let's just kind of jump right in here. I've got a set of drum tracks that I haven't comped yet, but uh, I do... Uh, I do want to show you show you a quick edit on them. So I'm going to go ahead and just select a random four bars of this track, and then I'm going to go ahead and separate the region. Now, before you do anything, you're going to have to make sure your drum tracks are grouped together, so you can go ahead and edit on all of them. So in this case, I selected four bars, bar 140, 140 to 144, which I have highlighted here. Now you can make sure you've got it all obviously by select by looking at your start and end up here at the top. So now that I have the four bars I want selected I'm going to go ahead and pull up Beat Detective but as I'm noticing here it looks like the drummer is playing well ahead of the click. So after I comp the drum tracks normally and in this particular case as well I'm gonna go ahead and shift the drums manually so they're just a little bit closer to the beat when I edit it then. So make sure your regions are adjusted accordingly so they're exactly on a beat. And for Beat Detective they need to be exactly on a beat. They can't be on a sub beat. So in this case I'm at 140 to 144 first downbeat of each one. First thing you're going to do is when you pull up Beat Detective, which is Apple 8 on the numeric pad, is you're going to have this window. Just go right down the region separation and hit Capture Selection. That's going to capture what you have highlighted with the region and it should show up here. Sometimes Beat Detective doesn't accurately always see these and you may end up having to change these to reflect what you actually do have highlighted. Select, uh, I usually go with 16th notes on most everything, but select it as needed. The three, if you're wondering what that is, is actually triplets. So if you have a fill or something that may have a triplet in it, you may want to do that separately and using the triplet uh, checkbox. Go over to the detection area. You can use uh, analy the analyze you want to use. In most cases, is going to be enhanced resolution, then hit analyze. Pull the sensitive sensitivity slider to where you want to put it. Um, in my case, on this track, there's a lot going on here with snares and kicks, so I'm going to go ahead and go to around 44%, and that looks like it's grabbing uh, all the snares, all the tom fills, and all the kicks. At times, if there's just some hi-hat work and you want to get every hi-hat hit, you may want to bump that up. If you want to go ahead and leave hi-hats and just have it grab kicks and snares and kind of leave what he's doing on the hi-hat alone, then you're probably going to want to bring this down a little bit. As you can see, here's the, a ride, and if I didn't want to grab that, I could just pull this down a little bit, and as you can see, it's not selecting the rides anymore. In this case, though, I actually do want to select the rides. Then they're going to click show trigger time. Now this is good because you can go through and see exactly where each trigger is lining up on a beat. Sometimes you may have to adjust these depending on the drummer or the take. And if that's the case, you just double click on the pink trigger line and enter in the value you need to, to have it line up on that beat. Uh, after that, you got trigger pad. You can put anything into this, but generally in between three to five milliseconds, I think works best. I'm going to use five in this particular case, and then hit separate. After it separates the regions, go to region conform. Here you can choose what you want to do as far as strength. Uh, generally, between the 70 to 100 it is probably going to be suit you best, but um, in this particular case, I kind of want it to be a little closer to the beat. I want to do it pretty strongly at 90. Now, after I clicked Conform, you saw the regions pulled to the respective beats. 
So now you've got these gaping holes which you need to fill, which would be edit smoothing, which is the final step. Click on smooth, uh, I'm sorry, click on fill and crossfade, crossfade length. Anywhere from 1 to 5 is generally going to be pretty good. I'm, I've been going with 5 lately, so I'm just going to roll with that. Click on smooth, and it's going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and do its thing. Okay. Uh, I guess that went a lot quicker than I thought. So, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the beat detective, and I'm going to go ahead and inspect its work. So as you can see, the very first beat of the beat detective region didn't get a crossfade, so you're going to have to manually do that after you do after when when you're done with the beat detective work and then you can go through and maybe inspect and see if uh, if any got messed up or any are, are running into a, an actual hit and, and fix those accordingly uh, most of the time you're gonna wanna listen to this soloed and make sure that there's no pops and clicks from the crossfades in which case you're gonna have to go in and maybe move the crossfade around and and, and fix that so I think that would be about it for the Beat Detective session. Generally, after I do an entire drum track, I've got a billion of these little uh, edits, and that's going to slow your computer down a little bit, and it's just generally ugly to look at, and it's real easy sometimes, to, if you're using the multi-tool, -tool, to just accidentally like click and drag something, and you don't even realize it. So after I completely edit a drum track, I like to consolidate them. I recommend doing it. But before you do that, you should make a new playlist and then label that playlist according to the consolidation. So after I completely edited it, I would go to my playlist, I'd go ahead and duplicate that edited playlist, and then I would go ahead and, you don't have to, but I would relabel it as maybe con for consolidated and go through and do that with all your drum tracks. So you can have them labeled so you know what, what's going on. So, uh, and then after that, select your entire drum region, go into edit, and then hit consolidate region, or option shift three. And then you got a nice pretty track to work with. And that way, when you duplicate the playlist, you can go, if something messed up, you hear something, you can go back into that playlist, grab the, the edited version where it's not consolidated, fix it, and maybe bring it into the other playlist. So I guess that's it. Uh, hopefully this actually helped, and um, and thanks.